guys, today we have a sleepy-eyed mom who can't seem to keep her eyes open during her hearing, and we're here to find out if she should spend any time in jail for failure to pay her child support. Mom and dad both have negative things to say about her, and they're tired of her excuses. Don't forget to check out my new true crime channel, Mom's Murder Madness. Let's get started. Of $1,272.50. The last payment she paid was through income withholding on December 28, 2023 in the amount of $197.83. She posted a $100 cash bond on this case that I am also asking to be forfeited and applied to the arrearage. There's been the one show cause. This is her first bench warrant. She has had one finding of contempt in the last five months. She should have paid a total of $6,462.50. She paid $326.14, leaving her short of compliance $6,136.36 in just the last five months. Um, her arrearage on this case is $13,115.49. Um, just for the record, well, she booked in to the county jail on April 3rd and was released on the 5th, so she has credit for two days. Um, also, Shatari was court ordered into the LEAP program back in November of 2023, and she never attended. Ms. Hoffman, do you contest or dispute the statements made by Ms. Petrullio? Um, I, I do not. Okay. Do you have any questions for Ms. Petrullio? Um, I just wanted to... Um make sure that we did include that $326.14 payment on the form? Yes. And it wasn't okay. one payment. It was two different payments and I forgot to include it. That's why I emailed you, but yes. Okay. Yep. Got it. Thank you very much. No further questions. Okay. Any proofs, Ms. Huffman? Uh, yes. I would call Ms. Gamble. Okay. Um, Ms. Ms. Gamble, are you currently working? No, no, ma'am. Okay. Why, uh, why are you not working at this time? Um, I've been pursuing to start back the job I was at before my car accident in December. That was my, my last payment was in December. I was working. Then I got into a car accident and had... Marley? I got into a car accident and had fractured hip surgery, but my doctor didn't give me no restrictions, thank God. So I've been trying to pursue... Oh. The last job I was at is on a hiring freeze. Okay, hang on just a second. Let me okay. let me ask you. So you fra you fractured your hip, right? Yes, ma'am. And that was in a car accident in December. Yes, ma'am. And when you had that car accident, um, you were you were working at that time. Yes, ma'am. And you lost your job due to that car accident. Yes, ma'am. Because you weren't able to work, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you said the doctor didn't give you any work restrictions, but you weren't able to work. Is that correct? No, no, they don't know. But about time, my I have uh, several visits, but obviously I wasn't going to work after I got out of jail. But from the last visit I had with them, he did not put me on, on any rope restrictions. They, okay, when they released, so when they released me, I was under care for 90 days. So after they released me, they didn't put me on no re restrictions. Okay, so now you're not on any restrictions, right? No, no. I was for 90 days, though. Okay. And did you say you had surgery on your hip? Yeah, I had a uh, fractured hip surgery. I have a scar, like about okay. two, like two foot, yeah, pretty long. Did you have any other injuries in that accident? No, just my hip. Okay. Um. So what if, so 90 days would have been um, March or beginning of April. So you could have started working in the beginning of April. April so yeah. This, yeah, so this is May 15th. Uh, why don't you have a job yet? I've been pursuing. I've definitely been put in several applications, and also okay. yeah. Where have you put in applications? I've put in applications at ILEX. They're on a the hiring freeze. That's where I was at. 
I at WSI I applied for Tenneco, um, it's a couple other things, a couple of maintenance jobs through D and D. I had an interview with Express Employment Professionals before, but their jobs was out in the city, so they just keep me updated until they get something here. So. Are you, uh, so that's a temporary employment agency or placement agency? Okay. Yeah, temporary agency, yeah. I had okay. a drug screen and all that through them and all that, so. Okay. That's my interview. Um, But Hylex was your old job and that's really where you would like to go back, but they're on a hiring freeze, is that correct? I mean, wherever I could go, you know. I've been okay. Wherever I can fit in. Okay. Know. Yeah. Um. So there was um testimony earlier that you were court ordered into the LEAP program in November of 2023, but you never attended. What happened with that? That must have been well. When I spoke to, I don't know. I don't really recall that, but I'm definitely requesting that as of now because a friend of mine told me about it, and I'm like, well. I don't even recall, remember that. I definitely, I probably wasn't even in my right. If I if I passed that up by any chance, that I, that was completely out of my own ignorance. I, I definitely needed that help because I had no idea. Definitely. Okay. So you do want to do the, the LEAP program? Absolutely. And you'll get started on that as soon as you possibly can? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, you have quite a um, high monthly support obligation on um, at least one of the cases. It's $1,007 uh, and then arrearages are 262. Have you considered filing a motion to um, adjust the support obligation yeah I went to court. yes I filed a motion and I went to court for that on the 23rd of April and I'm set for an evidentiary hearing June 13th and uh do you know who that's with that's with my mom and well no, I mean what like is it with a referee or uh the the uh, initial, the first one was with the referee, but okay. then they said it for an evidentiary hearing. I don't know. Who's okay. I don't, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Do you have any money that you could pay right now? I got twelve dollars to my name. Um, and do do you have any idea when you could make your next payment? Hmm. Possibly, I could I could definitely ask for some help. So before this week is out, you think you could have a payment before the end of the week? I can ask my dad if he can loan me some money. Okay. Um. So today's know, Wednesday already. You think you could have some money by Friday? How much? I I'm asking you. How much could you have? Probably fifty dollars. Okay, so you could make a $50 payment by Friday? Yes. And then hopefully by the next couple of weeks after that, you'd have your job and be able to start making payments again? Lord's willing, I'm trying. And okay. hopefully I'll be start, I'm supposed to be starting my college classes here soon. So if not, so I'll postpone where, that to the fall. And where are your something. college classes? KCC, I'm going back to school. So you've already started KCC once? You know, 10 years ago, I went to college. Do your credits quiet, that you quiet. got from... Quiet, Marla. Sorry, I'm sorry. Marla. Do your credits that you got from 10 years ago, uh, are they still... Um, <laughs> they're still credits that you can use now? Yes, ma'am. I, um, I had a 3-7 when I... Uh, a three seven when I was attending, I just was going through a lot with um 
having having my baby and then being pregnant again, I just stopped going. So I was on suspension. How much, uh, how many more credits do you need to graduate with whatever it was you were going for? I'm not going for that. It's a whole nother field. So, okay. So what will you yeah. need to graduate for that? Two, it, well, I have to go for two years to get my associates. So however many I haven't really gotten okay. that deep with, it, with the credits and all that. Yeah. Okay. Are you signed up right now to take classes for the next yes. semester? Okay. Yes. Yes. I've definitely registered and I'm just waiting for my appeal to go through. And but you then, intend you intend to work during the time that you're going to school? Yeah, possibly have to do second shift because my class is supposed to be set for the morning. But if they don't come, I probably have to take later classes and do first shift. So it's just like, however everything plays out. But whatever comes first at this point, I really, I'm going to have to work around it. Okay. <clears throat> I have no further questions. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Gamble, uh, you said you had the uh, accident in December 2023. Did you seek out any uh, no-fault wage loss benefits? Yes, through Sam Bernstein, I have an attorney. Okay. And have those been paid? No, I'm still, like, it's a process. Definitely, I got my paperwork submitted, and there's a couple other things I have to fax to them. So, well, there's two, part, there's two parts of no fault case. There's a wage loss that you should get regardless of the issue of, of, of fault. And then there's also a third party claim in this matter. So you're saying you're not getting any wage loss benefits in the interim. None of that, none of that has started. I filed my, my case. It was in February. Okay. And I didn't have a, yeah, it was first it was me having to get Medicaid and then trying to get on other people's insurance to, yeah, it was just, yeah, I'm, I'm new to all of this. So I'm just trying to um, definitely whatever steps I got to take for that, however that plays out. Anything else that you'd like me to be aware of? Um. I definitely am here trying to better my situation. I the um the everything was based off of a job that I did have in March of March 2023, March 14th. I was working very hard and like throughout the time I did get a little bit discouraged. Um, and I've definitely been trying to do the things that I can. I've, I've, my kids, I just, I'm just trying to be able to be there as the best I can for them. And I, it's unfortunate that I'm this far behind and I just, I'm just playing catch up and I'm starting over. So yeah, I'm just, yeah. Thank you. Ms. Escabila, uh, anything you would like to say? Ma'am? Marlon, come in. Ms. Escamila, anything else, anything you would like to say? Oh, uh, me? Yeah, yes. Um, at this point, I don't even know because... I just feel like I ain't going to get no help from her regardless of what she says or what she does. So I, I at this point, I just, you know, because it's been over a long time. You know, there's still a lot of quite a gap of area of where she was able to pay and didn't pay. And uh, like I said, at this point, I just whatever it takes to just get her to at least help out with something because, you know, right now I'm paying for school. I'm paying for everything out of pocket. and you know okay thank you there's no one anything you'd like to say yes your honor go ahead your honor see my whole situation with my daughter is sad um 
Go in there, please. Uh, I've been dealing with this since the little boy was a month old and the little girl was, what, nine and a half, ten months old. Support, providing for these kids, stability. They're getting older now. And it's always excuses, you know. I'm not, I shouldn't have to be responsible for the choices that she make in life. We had other options where she didn't have to pay the child support. We, she, she, she agreed to let me adopt the kids so we can get financial help. Um, it's just me and the kids. They can't get in. No programs. You know, I, I, I can't afford to do basketball. No, no, n no, nothing for them. And I've been stressing this to her, you know, um, they, they getting older. I, I need more help. You're, you're not doing anything because in chaos and excuses. And at this point, you know, I guess she was in a car accident. I get it. 100%. But before the accident, it was the same thing. Nothing has changed. We have excuses after excuses. And the last uh, hearing that we have for child support, she did know about the heat because the lady explained that to her that she can get in that. And she, she agreed to get in it. You know, it's always excuses and after excuses, but she don't know that she has put me in such a financial burden situation. I'm on disability. I have to force myself to work to provide for these kids every day. I got to take them to school. They don't have bus transportation. I have to physically get up and take them and pick them up every single day, which requires gas. They got to have clothes. They're getting big. She don't understand this, what she has put on me. Due to me working all of them hours to provide for these kids, disability is taking payments out of my check for these kids. When all she had to do was her and Jerry agreed to let me adopt these kids so we wouldn't have to be in this situation. I'm in a position now to where it's, it's just us. My, me and my boyfriend is no longer together, so I don't have that extra income. And I can't keep having these excuses because I'm not in a position to have any excuses to why I can't do. When my babies ask me, can they go to the school carnival and I can't pay $15? Ma'am, you muted yourself. You can't hear you, Sabrina. Can I don't even understand, Your Honor why I'm even going through this. I I really don't. I don't none of this. You know, I got to take food. They got to have snacks every day. I got to provide this. Food stamps only go so far because they're basing everything on my income. I get enough income to take care of me, but I don't have enough income to take care of all of these bills in this house and provide for them. So it's not fair that she gets to get a pet on the back to have these kids and disregard my needs or her kids' needs. You know, it's a joke to her. And, and, and it's not funny. These are lives. These are babies' lives that we're talking about. You don't, she don't want, she said she didn't want me to get the adoption. Now she take that, they help me, they go file these papers. I go to this court, all they had to do was to consent here. Then she go to say, where the money going in your pocket? What do you mean? I'm taking care yeah. of your babies. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Marlon. Well, in this matter, the court will make the uh, following finding in this case that Ms. Gamble uh, obviously was well aware of her support obligation. Absolutely. Uh, again, she was uh, in a car accident back in December, but the court notes in the one case that she owes over $5,000, the other case over $13,000, and those arrearages accrued much earlier than the car accident in this matter. Back in November of 2023, she was uh, ordered into the LEAP program, she did not attend. As she states, she didn't recall that. Well, unfortunately, you may not recall it. You're still responsible for doing it when that's a sentence of the court in these uh, particular matters. That she was injured in a car accident and fractured her hip, had surgery. She was out of the uh, doctor's care in March uh, after the 90-day period. That after that time, she's identified that she had... Uh, put in applications at about six different places. Well, somebody can put in six applications within an hour. It doesn't take you, uh, again, uh, two months to uh, put in. Uh... There was more applications than that. 
Okay, and well, I, that's that's I, you. That's what you testified to, ma'am. I'm just relying upon what you testified to. Okay. Uh, that I she is uh, going back to a KCC that she uh, had attended previously, did not complete that, and going into another program. The court will find that uh, based upon her testimony, she's not made a good faith attempt at compliance. She's failed or refused to comply and sure. is in contempt of court. With that, uh, Ms. Huffman, anything uh, before sentencing? Um, I would ask the court that since she she has had some interviews she does believe that she'll be able to get a job soon she indicated she does want to go into the leap program i believe that in order for her to get um where she needs to go in life that 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 leap program is going to be very beneficial to her um and she's also talking about going to school she's already uh applied and is ready to start the next semester and uh, and those things are only going to better her life. I would ask the court to just consider all of those things when making its decision today. Okay. Court will, court will first uh, forfeit the bonds previously posted in this matter. The court would enter order that uh, Ms. Gamble would participate in the GEMS program. It is now the, it used to be the LEAP program. It's now GEMS. The court would in this matter, I could sentence her up to 90 days in jail. I'm not going to do it that much the court is going to sentence her to 30 days in jail with credit for two days served the court is going to order that she would report to the uh, sheriff's office no later than four o'clock p.m on may 24th 2024 that gives you about a week and a half to uh, arrange things in this case the court would allow you to purge yourself of contempt by paying the sum of $500 in each case. So that's $1,000 total. You, if you pay that by the May 24th date, then you would not go to jail. If not, then you report to the sheriff's department on the 24th before 4 o'clock p.m. to serve your sentence. If, in fact, uh, you do not appear on that date, realize and recognize you could be sentenced to more days. You could be sentenced up to 90 days at this point. So that will be the uh, sentence and the order of the court. And uh, you're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Where is she living? Who is currently supporting her? I know it's not her mom because her mom is fed up with supporting her kids. So I don't know where she's going to get this $1,000. And I'm real suspicious as a recovering somebody myself the way she was nodding off in the beginning that's just my opinion i don't know anything so it's alleged but i don't see her getting that thousand dollars together her ex does not have any faith in her paying for anything and mom is mad mom is sick of her what do you guys think let me know in the comments thanks for watching